Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at BT9 and BT9 offers us lots of new and powerful cards to build and iterate on some new and existing decks. And today's deck I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be a brand new iteration of Grand Kawagamon OTK. So Grand Kawagamon OTK was a deck that existed all the way back in BT4 and kind of had mild success uh, in the subsequent sets ever since its release just because OTK decks are still kind of strong but the one big thing that was holding the deck back it was consistency in speed and now that we have the X antibody line it is looking to be more powerful just because we can have more inheritable sources to be playing around with for Grand Kawagamon's uh, Digiburst ability to then uh, follow up with going into a Grandis to be able to uh, attack and punch as hard as we possibly can which is the goal of any OTK deck is to break all of the opponent's security in one go and then line up a secondary attack it to close out the game. And the X antibody line that we got in BT9 just helps facilitate what the deck is trying to do. So with all that said and done, onto the actual deck profile. Starting off with the Digitama, I'm only going to be running four copies of Yokomon. So Yokomon is the only Digitama we realistically need. If you wanted to run a fifth Digitama, Modimon is pretty good, just for some extra DP, and that's all we're trying to gain out of Yokomon is a little bit of extra DP just to be on the safe side with our attacks and try to make our Digimon as powerful as we possibly can. If you wanted to, you could kind of swap out uh, the Digitamas and run Draw Engine Digitamas, but uh, we're not necessarily trying to utilize our Digitama slot because we're going to be hiding a big Digimon and raising most of the time. So Yokomon is really good because uh, her inheritable ability states that during your turn, when this uh, card is trashed due to the activation of a Digiburst ability, which is going to be on our Grand Kawagamon, then one of our Digimon gains plus 2000 DP until the end of the turn, namely our Grand Kawagamon, so that way he could hit as hard as he possibly can and as powerfully as he possibly can. Next, on to the rookies, I'm going to be running two copies of Terriermon. So Terriermon is just your anti-meta floodgate to, to try to stop and limit some of the opponent's actions until they deal with Terriermon. So Terriermon has this uh, all turns ability that we want to, where your opponent can't gain memory except by tamer effects. So we could use him to try to stop and limit some of the opponent's actions. Next, I'm going to be running uh, four copies of Kokuomon X Antibody. So Kokuomon X Antibody, like the other X Antibodies, could Digivolve for zero on top of his base form. We're not going to be running any Kokuomons because we don't necessarily care about that. And the only other Kokuomon we have is a little bit slower to evolve into just to get an extra inheritable source that is really not doing anything uh, that Grand Kawagamon can't do by himself. But what we are going to be using Kokuomon in the deck for is to utilize his on play when digivolving ability, more so for the on play part, where we get to reveal the top three cards of our deck, add one Digimon with Insectoid or Machine in its traits, and one X antibody option from among them into our hand, and then the rest go to the bottom. So it's just acting as the deck's stereotypical digger for a lot of our parts and pieces, which are going to be Insectoid based Digimon. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Pomumon. So Pomumon is going to be another anti-meta floodgate card, where this time he has the all turns ability where players can't play Digimon by card effects. So between Terriermon and Pomumon, we're trying to shut out uh, what could possibly go wrong in the opponent's security in the case that, that we can't necessarily finish them off with our big OTK combo. But also, just him sitting on the field could make the opponent's turns a little bit worse on their turn unless he is dealt with it just because uh, there's a lot of effects in the game that do play Digimon by card effects. Next up, I'm going to be running four copies of Palmon. So this is the promo version of Palmon, and this Palmon is really good just because it's interacting with our Digiburst. So uh, its inheritable ability states that during your turn, when this card is trashed up by the activation of a Digiburst ability, then one of our Digimon gains the jamming ability until the end of the turn. So ideally, we're going to use this as fodder for Grand Kawagamon, so that way we could gain the jamming ability, making our attack even safer and more effective when we're trying to, you know, OTK the opponent. And then the last uh, rookie of the deck is going to be one copy of Tentomon, just for a little bit of extra draw inconsistency. So he has the on play ability where we get to reveal the top card of our deck. If it's a green Digimon, we get to add it into our hand, thus replacing himself. Otherwise, uh, we get to place it to the bottom of our deck. So it's just helping us uh, see more parts and pieces and more cards. 
Next, on to the champions, I'm going to be running four copies of Weedmon. So Weedmon is a really good card, again, uh, like Yokomon and Palmon, to want to be Digiburst fodder. So his inheritable ability states that during your turn, uh, when this Digimon is trashed due to the activation of a Digiburst ability, then we get to gain one memory, allowing us to make even more powerful follow-up plays just for using our Digiburst ability. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Metal Kabuterimon. So there's a couple of different reasons why Metal Kabuterimon is in the deck. If you wanted to be any generic hybrid, then you could, but I do like Metal Kabuterimon for his flexibility on all of the different ways that we have to digivolve into him. Even though we're not trying to utilize his when digivolving ability because it doesn't really matter, we're just looking mostly to use him because he's a hybrid and he could digivolve on top of a green tamer to act as an extra attack out of nowhere to surprise the opponent and possibly close out the game with. But on top of that, uh, he could digivolve for 3 on top of level 3, which you're probably not going to do, but what you could possibly do is use him to just increase the overall stack by digivolving him for 1 on top of another level 4, because uh, with Digiburst, the more inheritables that we have, the stronger our Digiburst ability becomes because we could use it over and over again with our Grand Kawagamon. And then the last uh, champion of the deck is going to be 4 copies of Kabu Terimon. So this is the starter deck Kabuterimon, and this Kabuterimon is going to be the deck's dedicated blocker. If we want to use him as a blocker, most of the time we're just using him to Evo for one, so that way we could try to climb our stages as efficiently as we possibly can, while him also being an insectoid to use for our insectoid-based synergies. Next, on to the ultimates, I'm going to be running four copies of uh, Okuamon X Anibody. So Okuamon X Anibody is a really good card to digivolve up into, just because he has the alternative uh, Digivolution condition where we could Digivolve him for zero on top of an Okuamon. And then on top of that, his Wind Digivolving ability states that if this Digimon has Okuamon or X Anibody in its Digivolution source, then we get to suspend one of the opponent's Digimon. Then if this Digimon attacks, we may switch the target of the attack to one of the opponent's suspended Digimon. So it's just kind of a weird uh, when digivolving ability that just allows us to have some extra control. Then on top of that, he has a secondary ability where during your turn, when this Digimon would digivolve into a card with Insectoid in its traits, then we get to reduce the cost of that Digivolution by one. And then the Okuamon we're going to be using to complement the X Antibody is going to be four copies of the brand new uh, upgrade pack promo of Okuamon. So Okuamon is really good because uh, his uh, static ability while he's on the field is during your turn. When this Digimon would Digivolve into Insectoid in its traits, all of the opponent's Digimon gain the ability of uh, all turns. When this Digimon is suspended, you lose one memory until the end of the opponent's next turn. So this effect is basically acting like a mini version of uh, Ice Wall, which is pretty good because we could combo this with some of our abilities to suspend the opponent's Digimon down, so that way we could actually gain memory alternatively. Then on top of that, he has a nice inheritable ability where during your turn, when this Digimon has Insectoid in its traits, then it gains the piercing ability, so that way we could use it in combination with X Antibody to be able to attack the, to the opponent's uh, suspended Digimon and be able to deal damage at the same time as removing a Digimon body. Next, on to the level 6s, I'm going to be running uh, 3 copies of Grandis Kawagamon. So Grandis Kawagamon is uh, basically the Grand Kawagamon X Antibody card we're trying to utilize. So uh, we could Digivolve him for 4, or we could Digivolve him uh, on top of a Grand Kawagamon for 1, which is the more ideal situation because we want to go up into our Grand Kawagamon to be able to use its Digiburst ability and pass all of those buffs that we gained with its ability over onto our Grandis. And then on top of that, this card is just an absolute beast of a card, where when we Digivolve up into him, we get to suspend one of the opponent's Digimon down. Then if this Digimon attacks, we may switch the target of the attack to one of the opponent's suspended Digimon. So uh, this just allows us to change our target mid-attack, so that way we could try to effectively use our X Antibody card to be able to select the correct targets. Then on top of that, uh, he has a nice secondary ability where during your turn, this Digimon gains a plus 4,000 DP, so he's going to be swinging for 16k, which is just a lot to be swinging with, and with Yokomon and our Digiburst, we could boost him even higher. And then on top of that, he has an end of attack ability where once per turn, if this Digimon has a Grand Kawagamon or X Antibody in its Digivolution source, then we get to suspend one of the opponent's Digimon down and unsuspend this Digimon, so that way 
way he could get a secondary attack off, so we could try to hopefully use that second attack to swing for the game. And then the main mega of the deck that's making all of this possible I'm going to be running is four copies of Grand Kawagamon. So this is uh, the Dash Pack promo version of Grand Kawagamon, and uh, this card is just that good for its main ability of Digiburst 2, where one of your Digimon gains security attack plus one until the end of the turn. So uh, what we're trying to do is build a really big stack in our raising area, move out uh, our Digimon so that way we could uh, utilize Grand Kawagamon's ability to just get rid of uh, almost all of his inheritable sources or the ones that we want to get rid of to be able to increase the security attack of our Digimon. Then uh, Digivolve into Grandest Kawagamon and pass all of those buffs over onto him punch these security as hard as we possibly can, use his ability to unsuspend himself, and hopefully swing for the game. If not swing for the game, gain a decent amount of memory thanks to our Okuamon and uh, all of the suspending-based abilities that we're going to be playing with after him to be able to then line up a hybrid or something else to help us close out the game that way. So it's just a, the combo enabler allowing us to OTK the opponent. And because we are an OTK deck, we just are trying to line up our plays as consistently as we possibly can. So as far as the options go, I'm going to be running four copies of Green Memory Boost to help with that overall consistency on trying to find our parts and pieces. So its main ability states that we get to reveal the top four cards of our deck, add one green Digimon from among them into our hand, and then the rest go to the bottom. Then this card goes into the battle area so we could use its delay ability to gain two memory at a later turn, which we could use it to help make our plays even more efficient to be able to close out the games as best as we possibly can. Then at worst, this card has the security ability of going into the battle area, so that way we could at least gain the two memory to use at a later turn. And then the last option of the deck is going to be two copies of X Antibody. So X Antibody is a pretty decent card to help with what this deck is trying to do. At worst, we could use this as an inheritable source fodder for our Digi Burst ability because its main ability states that uh, we get to put this card to the bottom of uh, one of our Digimon without X Antibody in its Digivolution source to increase our Digivolution source uh, to then be able to get another Digi Burst ability off of our Grand Kawagamon. And then its security ability allows us to gain one memory and add this card into our hand, acting as a little bit of a security threat to try to slightly anti-tempo the opponent on some of their plays. But uh, its inheritable abilities, uh, what we're trying to gain out of the card, is uh, the fact that uh, during all turns, X Antibody can't be trashed from uh, this Digimon's Digivolution source by card effects. So the opponent won't be able to get rid of it if it's already in there. Then on top of that, uh, the main thing that we're looking to gain out of this card is that the when attacking ability it provides where we get to digivolve this Digimon into a Digimon from our hand with X antibody in its traits by paying its Digivolution cost. So that way we could swing into one of our opponent's Digimon with our Grand Kawagamon, use this ability to digivolve into Grandest Kawagamon and switch the target uh, because of Grandest Kawagamon's inheritable ability to uh, try to control the opponent's field. So it's just a really good card to help combo with what the deck is trying to do. And then lastly, on to the Tamers, I'm going to be running three copies of Mimi because Mimi is just still the best Tamer that uh, Green has to work with. So she's going to be the deck's dedicated memory fixing Tamer, so if our memory is ever less than uh, three, she'll just always hard set it to three. And what's making Mimi really, really good, especially in this deck, is the fact that we could try to turbo our raising area to get an extra attack off to try to close the game that way as well where if we have a level 5 or higher green Digimon in play, we could suspend this Tamer to basically get another raising phase, which is really, really important because if we have two Mimis on the field, then we basically get a hatch and egg with one Mimi and then raise it out with the other Mimi and that Digimon can attack, hopefully for the game because we broke all of the opponent's security with our Grand Kawagamon Grandest Kawagamon big combo play. The other green tamer that I'm going to be running is going to be one copy of uh, Izzy and Mimi just for some extra memory. So at the start of our turn, if the opponent has a suspended Digimon uh, in play, then we get to gain two memory. So if they're trying to race us and aggress into us, then we could utilize and optimize on that to be able to uh, gain some additional tempo. Then its secondary ability isn't necessarily bad, but it's not anything we really want to use. 
but we could think about utilizing it uh, because uh, of uh, our grandest Kawagamon. So during your turn, uh, when one of our level 5 uh, green Digimon attacks, we get to suspend this tamer to reveal the top 3 cards of our deck, and we get to Digivolve uh, that attacking Digimon into one level 6 green Digimon from among them without paying its memory cost, then the rest go to the bottom in any order. So we could use this to basically turn our Okuamon or Okuamon X Anibody into a Grand Kawagamon or Grandest Kawagamon if we really wanted to. And then the last tamer of the deck is going to be two copies of Cool Boy, just because Cool Boy is that good of a card to run in virtually any X Anibody based deck. So he has a nice on play ability where we get to reveal the top three cards of our deck, add a Digimon uh, with uh, X Anibody in its traits, and add one option card with X Anibody in its traits from among them into our hand, then the rest go to the bottom in any order, which is pretty good, trying to find some of our important parts and pieces, namely our grandest Kawagamon. Then, on top of that, his secondary ability states that uh, when uh, one of your Digimon digivolves into a Digimon of the same level with X Anibody in its traits, then we get to suspend this tamer to gain a memory and draw a card to be able to gain some extra resources to make even more powerful plays possible and our deck a little bit more consistent. And then we do have a whole bunch of other tech and tools that we could think about incorporating into the deck to really customize it and make it your own. So if you wanted to, you could run a red package just to play a delicate plan because the only thing we're really afraid of when we're attacking into the opponent's security is going to be their options. So a delicate plan is a good card to take away that threat to make our swing even safer than it normally would be, especially if we pair it up with jamming and we have a naturally high DP. Then uh, the card that we want to run to help uh, run uh, the delicate plan to act as the red source is going to be Hero as not only just a good memory fixing tamer, but he also could help interact with our Digimon because he's just generically stating level 5 or higher Digimon, it doesn't even matter what color, to give them some extra DP. Then if you wanted to, you could play a, a, a Terriermon low end and incorporate Rapidmon just for some extra control, and then you could swap your digi exit to be more draw based, so that way you could try to uh, use your raising area a little bit more effectively, rather than just hide one big stack, so we can move it out, get some good card draw in, and then build up another Digimon, which uh, isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world, especially since uh, Terriermon and Rapidmon have some really good control. Then if you wanted to, we do have some other really solid rookies you could think about running. So you could run uh, Kokuamon uh, just because we are already running Kokuamon X Anibody, and it's just giving our level 6 or higher Digimon Security Attack Plus to punch as hard as we possibly can, which is essentially the goal of what the deck is trying to do. And if we are playing into that Insectoid-based synergies, then we also have Tentamon to think about to be able to make our evolution even cheaper. Then we do have uh, some other X antibodies in green that we could think about running. So if you wanted to, you could run uh, Kawagamon uh, just to act as a solid base to be able to use a uh, Kawagamon X antibody. Even though I don't necessarily think it's that needed, it's still just nice to have it just so that way we could have some extra control and extra abilities and do various other things with what the deck can possibly be. Then if you want some sort of defense in your security while still sticking on theme with an insectoid based synergy deck, then we also have Snime on it to just try to help suspend the opponent's Digimon down when it gets triggered in our security and act as a level 4 Digimon to start being able to climb our stages off of. But if you do want some really good tech cards just to help your evolutions be cheaper or more efficient, then we do have Argamon as a really good way to cheaply Digivolve, just because Digisorption 3 makes his Digivolution cost effectively zero, and he could help play our level 3 Digimon when we're being aggressive with our higher level Digimon. Even though he doesn't necessarily have that great of synergy with how X Antibodies or Grand Kuagamon wants to work, he's still just a good card in of his own right to just be solid on tempo and allows to use different cards in different ways. Like being able to line up a Nidhogmon as an example for some extra control just because we're trying to also suspend the opponent's Digimon down casually and we could take advantage of suspending the opponent's Digimon down by basically board wiping them with Nidhogg and Nidhogg still works with a lot of our Digi Burst synergies that we're already playing in the deck because of our Grand Kawagamon. Then we do have some other really good option cards that you could think about running. So you could run uh, Hidden Potential Discovered just to make our evolutions cheaper or free. On top of the fact that we do have a green plugin if you wanted to do something like a Hidden Potential Discovered. 
And we even have various other option cards that we could run to enhance or extend some of our plays. So we do have the other plugins if you really wanted to try it, running some more plugins to do various different things with them. Or we could think about running uh, Grandest Scissors to uh, just try to line up some extra attacks just because we get to suspend one of the opponent's Digimon down and unsuspend one of our Digimon, which is what we're trying to gain is that extra attack after we break all of the opponent's security. Or if you just want to run some big security threats and removal option cards, we do have a Ground Fang, Electroshocker, and Terrace Cluster as some really good removal option cards for us to utilize. Then we do have some other really good tamers that, that we could think about playing. A budget replacement to Mimi is going to be Ken, which isn't necessarily bad at acting as a good memory fixing tamer while being able to gain us memory for attacking into the opponent's Digimon, which is something we're already going to kind of try to do anyway if we're unable to uh, be up into the opponent's security. But for the most part, this is just my interpretation on what a Grand Kawagamon OTK deck is going to look like in BT9, and I think it's going to be a really, really powerful deck just because OTKs are usually pretty powerful, but we have more tech and tools to make the deck even faster, and that's kind of the whole crux of OTK decks is they need to be moving fast enough and be consistent enough in order to OTK, and I think this green deck has what it takes to be able to go the distance. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu, so giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there, and I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.